Hello and welcome back to Math Tutories. For today, we are going to discuss the different parts of a circle. At the end of this video lesson, the learners will be able to illustrate a circle and the terms related to it, such as radius, diameter, chord, center, arc, central angle, and inscribed angle. Since we're talking about circles, there are many things around the globe that are circular in shape, such as wall clock, compact disc, traffic signs, spinning wheel, buttons, and eyeglasses. So most of these are in circular shape. So what is a circle? A circle is a set of points on a plane, all of which are equidistant, that means the same distance, from a fixed point called the center. So we need to have a point, and from this point, we can draw many points around it, which are equidistant from this certain point. So for example, from the north, we have this, and this one. So if we're going to connect the points that are equidistant from point A, we can form a circle. This certain point in the middle is what we call the center. A circle is named by its center. So this circle is named as circle A. So you can use the word circle or you can use the symbol of a circle. You can have more circles here such as circle D and circle Y. Again, pinapangalanan ito using its center. So now let's have the different terms related to circle. Here we still have circle Y with the center at point Y. The first term here is the radius. It is a line segment drawn from the center to any point on the circle. Mula sa center to any point on the circle, just like here, point B, we have drawn a radius. So this segment YB is an example of a radius. Another example, segment YA, Y is at the center while point A is on the circle and this segment is what we call the radius. Okay? So notice that this radius notice that the radius also emphasizes the distance of all the points of the circle from the center. So if a radius has a measure of 5 inches, another radius must also measure 5 inches because by the definition of a circle, all of the points on the circle are equidistant from its center. Next is what we call the chord. It is a line segment with both endpoints on the circle. So kung ang, radi kung ang radius, ang endpoint niya is center at on the circle, dito naman sa chord, dapat yung dalawang endpoints ay parehong nasa circle. Just like point C and point D. So here we have segment CD and it is an example of a chord. Again, the endpoints are on the circle. Besang! Again, the endpoints are on the circle. Kaya ito tinawag na. Another example, from point C to point E, we have another line segment. And this line segment is also a chord because the endpoints are on the circle. Okay? While the next one is what we call diameter. It is a chord that passes through the center of the circle. That means we must join two points on the circle just like points F and G. So this is still considered as a chord and it must pass through the center, which is point Y. Another example here, from point H to point B, we connect them because they are both on the circle and at the same time, this line segment passes through the center. Still, segment HB is a chord and since it passes through the center, this is specifically called a diameter. In addition, its measure is twice the measure of a radius. 
A while ago, in our example, segment BY is 5 inches. That means segment HB, which is double of it, 5 plus 5, 10. This diameter measures 10 inches. Now let's talk about the angles in a circle. First, we have central angle. It is an angle formed by two radii of the same circle. In circle Y, kung magdodrawing tayo ng dalawang radius or two radii, just like segment LY and segment YM, notice that we have formed an angle here at the center. And this is what we call the central angle. So in symbol, segment LY and segment YM, which are both radii, formed a central angle called angle LYM, wherein the vertex, which is point Y, is the center of the circle. Let's draw another radius here, which is segment NY. We just need to connect that to another radius, just like segment LY. And with that, it will form another central angle named angle NYL. Angle NYL is called a central angle because it has been formed at the center of the circle. Next is what we call the inscribed angle. It is an angle formed by two chords of the same circle. Kung kanina, ang ating mga central angle ay nabuo out of two radii, ang inscribed angle naman ay out of two chords, just like this. Segment QP and segment PR are both chords, and they have created here an angle. This is what we call an inscribed angle. Here, the two chords QP and PR formed an inscribed angle which is named as angle QPR. Another one, segment SL and segment SM and they meet on the circle. So this is another example of inscribed angle. Madali lang namang distinguish whether central or inscribed. Kapag central, ang pinaka-vertex is at the center. Pero kapag inscribed, ang pinaka-vertex is on the circle. Okay? Now, let's have the arcs. The first one is what we call semicircle. So, if we have the whole circle Y here, semicircle is just half of it. And it is represented by an arc. We simply just need to choose two points on the circle, just like points Q and R, which will cut the circle into half. We can name it using two letters. So here, the semicircle is named as arc QR. Next, we have a minor arc. It is a portion of a circle that is less than half of the circle. So that means a minor arc is just smaller or less than half of the circle. Just like here, we have arc RS. As you can see, hindi umambot hanggang dito. Another example here, from point T and point Q, ang in-emphasize natin is itong part ng circle na to, which is an arc. We name it as arc QT. So for as long as this is half of the semicircle, that is what we call a minor arc. While, of course, if we have a portion of a circle that is more than half of the circle, that is what we call a major arc. Just like here. From point Q up to point U. At para hindi tayo malito sa pag-name nito, if we name a major arc, let's use three letters. The first letter will be the starting point, and the last letter will be the ending point. And let us just choose any points on the arc na dadaanan niya. We can use S or we can use R. So we can have arc QSU or arc QRU. 
which are examples of major art. Okay. Yes. So let's have more examples. Let us name the following. First, let's name the circle. So the center is at point A. And to name a circle, we must use the circle symbol and its center. Next, let's name all radii. So we can have a radius, which is just a line segment from the center to another point on the circle. We can have segment AH, segment AC, and segment AS. So these are examples of radius or radii. Next, let's have a diameter. A diameter is a chord and it must pass through the center. So here, the only diameter that we have is segment IH. Next, let's name the center. The center of the circle is simply a point. We have point A. So this point A is equidistant from all the points on the circle. Next, let us name all the central angles. These are angles formed by two radii, and its vertex is on the center. Here, we can have angle HAC, angle CAS, angle IAS. We can even have angle HAS. So for as long as the vertex is the center of the circle, that is what we call a central angle. Next, let's name a chord. So a chord is a line segment when we combine two points on the circle, just like points T and E, so that we can have segment TE as a chord. Another example, segment ME, as well as segment IH. However, kanina, in specify natin that this one is particularly known as diameter. Next, let's name the semicircle. Semicircle is just half of the circle and we can easily identify that if we have found a diameter because the diameter usually cuts the circle into half. So these two points, I and H, and if we are pertaining to this portion of the circle, that is what we call the semicircle. So arc IH is a semicircle. Next, name the minor arcs. Minor arcs are simply arcs that are smaller than the semicircle. Here we can have arc HC, arc TI, and arc IS, etc. Now, let's name the major arcs. So, for example, from point I to point C, instead of just using I and C, we must use any point na madadaanan ng ating arc. Pwedeng M, pwedeng T, pwedeng E. So, let's just have arc IMC for the major arc. Again, pwede rin tong pangalanan as arc ITC. Pinilitan lang natin yung nasa gitna. Pero still, the endpoints are points I and C, which emphasize that this one is greater than the semicircle. Okay? So I hope that you have learned the different parts and terms related to circle. Next video lesson naman is about triangle and quadrilaterals. Thank you for listening.